Kevin Price. That's right. Wait, no, I'm not Kevin Price. I'm Sigmund Kramer. Well, all right, I'm not the star. I'm the assistant star. Hey, everybody. Hope you're having a great week. And uh, Kevin's not here. Yeah, not right this second anyway, but he will be a little bit later. But you know who is here? Frank Granite. That's right, Frank Granite, a very important contributor to the price of business. He's been working with Kevin on trying to fix uh, a very big problem in America, which is the over-medication of our youth, especially when it comes to things like ADHD. And uh, Frank, are you there? Yes, I am, Sigmund, and uh, great to be on today. We have a very special guest with us today. Well, before you introduce your guest, I'd like you to tell the listeners more about you and your organization. Well, I founded the Coalition Against Over-Medicating Our Youth, and basically what we try and strive for, and, and the ADHD condition uh, has very prominent symptoms, and many families battle those conditions and symptoms. And what we'd like to do is help them assess and give them advice and educational advice uh, to work with their physicians on going to the root cause or the underlying causation you know, of these ADHD-like symptoms prior to the premature use of drug therapy. And uh, what we've done nationwide, uh, this movement is gaining uh, phenomenal ground and uh, uh, support across the country. Even in our traditional medicine sector, many As, physicians are realizing that uh, that's what we need to do to go forward. It, it needs to gain traction. And you have an organization and a website. Can you uh, point people that direction, please? Yes, yeah, Sigmund. It's uh, caoy.org. And uh, just go to that website. There's a wealth of information regarding the assessment process. We even have an action plan, uh, especially for parents uh, that are battling uh, this condition with their children. Yeah, and part of that uh, resource, part of that wonderful resource there at caoy.org is, uh, well, your your contributors, and some of them are physicians. In this case, uh, you have Dr. David Sack, an MD, uh, as your guest, and we're very happy to have you on today's program, Dr. Sack. Well, thank you for welcoming me. It's a pleasure to be here. And Dr. Sack, uh, you know, we've, we've looked at uh, the work that you're doing, uh, and I know you're a, the Chief Executive Officer of Elements Behavioral Health, which is a network of addiction treatment centers across the country. But today's segment, you know, if we could focus on the assessment solutions, we're a solutions-based uh, program. And when you look at the ADHD condition, and, and I'd like you to look at the, you know, as far as the young child population, do you think we're making strides as far as that assessment process to get to the root cause before we go to that premature use of drug therapy, especially, you know, in young children? I think that there are real challenges today. You know, uh, there was a time where we really didn't even think of prescribing ADHD medications until someone was in school and where they demonstrated uh, an inability to function and succeed in the classroom. And now we're seeing children as young as three and four years old being started on ADHD medication. And I think there's a lot of question about what is the continuum of active behavior in children that young. So I think that, that the need for better assessment and more patience before making a determination is really critical. Now, prior to your uh, post at you know, Elements Behavioral Health, you served as a senior clinical scientist at the National Institute of Mental Health. And um, as far as neuroendocrinology, you specialize in that and circadian rhythm as, as far as the uh, uh, seasonal as well as circadian rhythms. Uh, how can you relate that on, you know, on a layman's term to our audience, our listeners that really are battling with these types of uh, symptoms, you know, with their children? Um, what, what do you focus on, or if, if you had to pick one solution base or to go after as far as an assessment, what would that be in and what does that look like for that parent that is trying to help their child? Well, I think that clinical history is really important, and direct observation of a child in multiple settings is really important. So that I think you can't rely on any one physical or psychological or endocrine test to make a determination. You know, when I was at the NIH, there were a number of studies being done looking at how hyperactive are ADHD kids. In other words, how much of this is a, a problem of attention versus hyperactivity. And one of the striking observations were that you can really see the biggest difference in hyperactivity at nighttime when they're supposed to be asleep. The kids with ADHD are much more restless sleepers. They have many more movements at night. 
Um, but I think that it, it, it is a mistake to rely on any one test, whether it's a, a neuropsychological test or a, a physiological test, to make a diagnosis. You know, as far as the physiology, and I talk about that in my book, Dr. Sack, with the American epidemic, we talk about physiology as well as the metabolic or, you know, the endocrine system as well. But, you know, when you look at physiology, are you sensing um, or, or is it your belief, do you espouse to the belief that, um, you know, when a child at a very young age, you know, with the spinal or upper cervical area of the neck has an influence bearing on, you know, a child's uh, condition, do you usually recommend that, or, I mean, are you wide-spectrum? Do you kind of do that checklist, or how do you feel we should proceed as a country going forward before we, you know, prematurely prescribe this, you know, stimulant right. to, so, you know, so my a three-year-old concern, child? Yeah, and, and I think that one of my biggest concerns is that when you look at how ADHD gets diagnosed, you could have two neighborhoods 10 miles apart where the incidence of ADHD is 5% in one neighborhood and 20% in the other. And it's hard to understand how you could have such a big difference other than if the diagnosis was being made on a kind of arbitrary basis. And so, you know, one of the things that I think needs to occur is better training of pediatricians because in most instances it's not a psychiatrist or child psychiatrist that's making this diagnosis but a pediatrician who's had limited training and experience uh, in rendering a diagnosis of ADHD. You know, they get a call from, the parents get a call from a school teacher who says, you know, your son is hyperactive and you need to get him put on medicine, and they go to the pediatrician and says, the teacher says, my son's hyperactive, and they may or may not use the standard evaluative instruments like the Connor scale or some of the neuropsychological right. tests like the TOVA testing to make an assessment and the next thing you know, uh, this kid who may have lots of other issues or may not have any problem at all, except that they're a little bit more active than their peers for their age, winds up on medicine. And gentlemen, I'd like yep. to jump in really quickly as well. Uh, I've got a four-year-old son. He's in school, and he had been having problems. He had been having a lot of behavioral behavioral issues. And uh, we went to get him evaluated, and they came back with, you know, we did testing, uh, evaluative testing for both autism and ADHD came back negative for both, and uh, still the, the problems, you know, kept happening. Uh, so we went to try to find another course of action, another uh, set of, of experts to look at, and because of strictures pay, placed because of um, insurance costs, you know, uh, trying to find someone in network, uh, it, it becomes a big headache because not only are parents unable and, and ill-equipped to diagnose their own children, they're also not sure where to turn to find the right experts that can really do a proper assessment. And you're right, they, they take them to the pediatrician thinking this is where you take your kid. Uh, and the pediatricians are also ill-equipped to do that. And you know what? We got a list of names from our pediatrician, none of which panned out. It is very frustrating from a parent's perspective uh, to try to find you know somebody that's going to be in-network in their insurance and who's going to be properly qualified. So what do you have... Uh, for tips for parents in in that regard? Well, I think from a medical perspective, I think that probably the best assessments are going to occur in um, board-certified or eligible child psychologists or child psychiatrists. Um, Because this is difficult work and because of the time it takes to work with families, there are very few of those. There's a national shortage of both kinds. And so that it makes it especially difficult, as you encountered, to get a good assessment. Um, some of the university-based programs, medical school-based, uh, you know, departments of psychiatry have child psychiatrists and have programs that specialize in ADHD where you're likely to get a much more comprehensive and thoughtful assessment than it's going to occur in a 15-minute office visit with a pediatrician. Absolutely. And it's almost like, Dr. Sack, there has to be a marriage now between, you know, psychiatry and holistic medicine or, or or alternative medicine to go after these nutritional causative risk factors, the environmental, you know, as well as the physiological risk factors. And, and you're right, it is a, it's a definite uh, difficult task for a parent to navigate through that system and find the right source. And that's why we've established our, our you know, our, we're officially a nonprofit, and that's what we do is educate where you can go to start that process, uh, no matter where you are in the country. And that's what we like to do. Uh, to, to basically help these kids get on the right behavioral pathway before they go to the stimulant drugs. It's not to say we're against stimulant medications, but 
you know, there is some work to be done. And, uh, you know, Dr. Sack, we appreciate your perspective and uh, coming on today and, and kind of shedding more light on what has to be done uh, in this field as far as the ADHD condition in young children. We appreciate your time. Oh, thank you so much for inviting me. Yeah, and Dr. Sack, how can people get more information about your practice? Well, I think uh, probably the best way is to go on our website, elementsbehavioralhealth.com, and they can find all the information about me and our programs. Elementsbehavioralhealth.com. And Frank, wrap it up, buddy. Well, we've got org, and if you go to that website, you're going to get a wealth of information to help your child as well as yourself if you're battling the ADHD condition and symptoms. And uh, look for this interview as well on usdailyreview.com, uh, seen on the Internet worldwide. And uh, Thanks again, guys. Yeah, another great interview, another great contribution from Frank Granite. Thank you so much, gentlemen. And uh, we'll be back to The Price of Business coming up in just a couple of minutes. Stay tuned.